I just got some earth shattering news about HHN. So there is tons of news about Halloween Horror Nights dropping here lately. Lots of stuff, including some very controversial HHN merchandise. So I had to bring myself out here to check it out. We're gonna talk all things HHN today. So come with me, I got you. Let's go do this. <laughs> Say hi. Welcome everybody, welcome to Hollywood. If you need a taxi, call Abby the cabbie today. There you go. <laughs> Have a great day, Levy. Thank yeah, you. Good to see you. You gotta love Labby the Cabby. Make sure that uh, you message to uh, guest services at Universal that we definitely need him and, and Betty Boop and Marilyn Monroe and Shaggy and Scooby and all the, the street performers. They are a must. They add so much to Universal Studios that is different and uh, gives you much more of an immersive nature than uh, many other places. So uh, they are a gem and a treasure and we need to keep them at all costs. Hey, Betty Boop kept me on schedule today of when to get in the five and dime when it opens. So you gotta love that. Good morning. So I started my morning in here, fittingly enough, hanging out with Shaggy and Scooby, and uh, right here on Hollywood Boulevard, still waiting on everything to open. I'm here very early, but there is a lot of very controversial HHN merchandise to check out. Now, I'm an 80s kid, and uh, I have some thoughts on this, and uh, I'd love to hear yours. But as soon as Five and Dime opens up, we're gonna check it out in detail. But there is a little window uh, like display here. And we'll take a better look in a few minutes, but where horror lives, we're gonna discuss what I see there. And uh, the logo and the colors, it's kind of hard to see right there. I promise we will check it out better, but uh, initially my thoughts are, I don't like the aren't. Betty Boop just told me they open at 10, so we still have about 20 minutes or so to go, and then we'll go in there and check it out. Thank you, Betty. I love being here very early in the morning. Number one, it's still really nice out. It's like 70 degrees, a little breeze blowing. The sun's not really hot yet. And the street performers are out. I've already hung with Shaggy and Scooby, talked with Betty Boop and Marilyn Monroe back there. Uh, it's really cool. They are great, great street atmosphere performers here. And uh, I think they are something that really sets Universal apart. We're gonna get back over there and continue our HHN talk in just a few minutes. Uh, until then, I'm gonna mingle. <laughs> See you later. Never know who you're gonna run into out here in the morning. Hey, Doc. Hey, buddy, how you doing? Good, good morning. That's what I mean, in the span of about 10 minutes, I've hung with Shaggy and Scooby, talked with Betty Boop and Marilyn Monroe, and uh, said good morning to uh, Doc Brown. Pretty good start to the day. So the thing about HHN is uh, the season, the buildup to me, in some ways is, is bigger than the event, more exciting, all the anticipation and everything like that. Uh, it just really adds to it and um, all the like which house, which house, you know, this house is coming, these rumors, those rumors, merch dry, uh, drops, announcements trickling in, all that stuff really builds the excitement and anticipation over the next, what, f five months from now or so. And uh, that really just hypes it up. It's like uh, the build up to Christmas a lot of times with the decorations and the music and everything uh, that's puts you in the mood for so long 
and then the event gets there and you're so hyped up out of your mind and excited and and ready for it and to me it's the same thing with HHN and uh, this year I think uh, a lot of us 80s kids might be very happy a lot of us who love the nostalgia and the legacy stuff like uh, Ghostbusters I think we're gonna be very happy because I think you're gonna see Ghostbusters here I think you also have a better than average chance of seeing Nightmare on Elm Street and something that ties in the uh, old Poseidon adventure uh, attraction. I think we're gonna get a little bit of all that. We'll talk more about it when the five and dime opens and we can get in there and look at the merch. I'm gonna give you my thoughts on the merch then, but uh, initially I will say it feels like the merch, the early merch drops always kind of miss the mark a little bit. And I love them. I, I love HHN, everything about it, but the early merch drops always almost feel like a work in progress to get people talking. We'll see. We'll talk about it more in a few minutes. All right. It is after 10 o'clock. Five and Dime should be open. It's time to go check out that HHN merch see if they drop some new ones i did see that they're dropping some black shirts to go with the orange shirts still have the same logo we're going to talk about it uh but the question is are the black shirts going to come to the parks or are they going to be online only we're going to find out they're putting some stuff out over here let's go check it out i think i need a coffee <sighs> gotta keep going been going since early this morning now if you haven't seen they've had big sections of the park closed with construction walls because they are working on the lagoon and several other things over here besides the DreamWorks expansion and the question is are we going to get a lagoon show for HHN well on the first speculation map there is definitely an icon for a show over here on the lagoon you can see where they are working on it you can see this i mean all this out here they're working on installing and because of that it whatever they're doing is spreading out to where they have this whole area over here by starbucks going from san francisco into new york it's blocked out it says no through traffic they got the walls up you can see the big uh earth moving and heavy equipment in here um hopefully that means we're going to get a normal nighttime show coming and hopefully a nighttime show for hhn something else that's been popping up related to hhn a lot is creature from the black lagoon merchandise and Easter eggs and everything all over the place. We're gonna talk about it when we get in there, but there was a huge creature display that popped up out of nowhere that was taken over by the HHN display. And the interesting thing is here is the creature stuff was set up exactly like the HHN stuff. Does that mean so? I would love to see a creature house uh, and have him at least be part of the classic monsters if they bring them back but uh, let's get over there and talk about it okay everybody I'm back with the HHN video here and I just got some earth-shattering news about HHN I don't have any confirmation other than it comes from I'm just gonna say people who would know who are here um, that despite the dates that it's given us for HHN right now online, they are going to announce that fear cannot be contained because we are going to have HHN seven nights per week this HHN season. That's a huge bombshell. That's number one. Huge bombshell number two is the pretty much confirmation by those who would know here that we are getting another monster's house and we are getting a Nightmare on Elm Street house besides the obvious that it does seem like Ghostbusters are coming. Uh, I can't tell you <laughs> how I heard that, but let's just say that's the rumor, that's the word from people who would know. And uh, I was not expecting that while I was here at the park. And 
if that is true, if that's what they mean by, part of what they mean by uh, fear cannot be contained, uh, that would be huge. And it would make sense. Uh, I tried to go live. I am inept with trying to do a live stream uh, onto YouTube. But uh, I'm going to try to get this info out as fast as I can. I hope, I hope you guys are enjoying this video. We're going to make it over here and talk about the merch. But when it comes to fear cannot be contained, which was in their commercial, fear is supposed to come in every like 20 year cycles. And it's supposed to be, it's been like 14 years since we've had fear as an icon. I first took that and I still think it is partly true as fear cannot be contained. So he is going to get out earlier than his four, or 20 year cycle. And he's gonna be an icon this year. I still think it means that now, from what I understand, fear can't be contained also refers to the fact that it's not, HHN is not going to be contained to select nights per week this season. It's going to be seven nights a week. We'll see if that's true, but uh, I got it on some pretty good info. You never can tell. Maybe they were told something to mislead in case they dropped it out, uh, but it's more than one person who would know who let, let that out of the bag. So we will see. And uh, that's the big one. Now let's go check out this merch. I definitely think they should have the horror makeup show going during HHN. It would pull crowds. It fits in. I definitely would do that. <laughs> Sorry you can't hear me because uh, they just let anybody in here, including Beetlejuice. Hey, hey, it's Homer J. <laughs> All right, so there is the orange shirt. And there is the new drop of the shirt in black with the same logo. This pretty much looks like the eyeball and logo on my slime ball skateboard wheels from like 1989. The foam trucker hat I do not do trucker style hats they don't look good on me and this one's very foam foamy this mannequin's looking like it walked straight out of a Cindy Lauper video maybe Madonna coolest thing I feel like is the tumbler. The problem is how the logo is. I've heard a bunch of people saying when you see it, you, you kind of see the word whore. Like not the nice word. Like the way your eyes jump around with the W and the horror. Like it, it and then you jump back up to the E. It's like a lot of people have said that a lot of people not just us people who have the tendency to flip-flop letters it's it, it, so that's that's not a good thing probably let's take a look if i show it to you now are you going to be able to unsee it it kind of looks like an alley scene from a punk rock video or something in like 1987 now there has been a lot of argument about is this 80s looking is this 90s looking is it early 2000s uh usually i find that varies with age but uh as someone who lived through the 80s and 90s and 2000s um to me it kind of looks like they gave <laughs> i did make it in here it's Betty. <laughs> she was keeping up with me. Um, it to me, it looks like they gave someone the task of creating something that's like totally 80s or 90s, 
who didn't live through the time period. So you get sort of like the idealized, like stereotypical, uh, like version of that. Like there's this great meme. If I can find it, I'll put it in here. It's like, oh, you live through the eighties and it's like all this super colorful stuff and everything else. It's like, no, I live through the eighties and it's like wood paneling and an Atari and you know, that kind of stuff. And that, that's more accurate. Uh, but you know, our idealized version of that is we remember all the bright colored stuff. Like it was all together always. And it kind of has that definitely some early nineties to it too, maybe. But when you talk punk rock, there's been a lot of people like, Oh, it's like punk rock. Well, punk rock was popular like late 70s through mid to late 80s. So if it, it, anything that came after that emulated the original punk rock. So uh, you got to credit it back to there. Does it mean anything for HHN? I think it might uh, because I think it might tie into some of the... Um, uh, legacy stuff that, that's coming, some of the older stuff. Like, I think Ghostbusters is coming. Scare Zone tributes to our house, it's coming uh, some way. Now, hearing a confirmation that Nightmare on M Street is looking like a, a kind of a done, done deal, those are very 80s centered and heavy. And then if you bring classic monsters back and you bring in uh, possibly uh, like Poseidon's Fury. Greek mythology uh, style house. That's also a throwback because Poseidon's Fury is very uh, it's an old ride, original to uh, Islands of Adventure. So maybe we're going for the nostalgia. Maybe that's what that is. Um, I don't know. The first I, I tend to never buy the first merch that comes out. Uh, like right now, I got on my favorite shirt from last year's HHN um, is a Doctor Oddfellow shirt, and just has this subtle. Uh, Jack reference right here with the circus and then HHN on the the sleeve, you know, and then it's got Oddfellow on the back, but I'll never get the camera back there to show you. That's actually my favorite shirt. I like to buy stuff at the um, um, event itself and wait on other merch to come out. But the other big thing is you can get the black version of the shirt. If you don't like the orange, and a lot of people didn't like the orange, I, I don't like the fact that you'd be able to see people too well in the scare zones, in the dark, in the houses and things like that. But they do have a black one. It still has the clip art looking logo. Uh, but I love all things HHN and I love it here at Universal Studios. So uh, it's here. I wanted to come and check it out. Got some extra special um, info, inside info today. I hope you, you, you heard that and I hope that pans out. That would be super cool. Um, we will talk more about my houses. I think those four that I mentioned are coming. Uh, I think there's still a chance for Five Nights at Freddy's. I, I think there's a chance for Beetlejuice too. Um, there's going to be something Blumhouse. Blumhouse is a werewolf movie got pushed back. It doesn't mean it won't be here. Uh, there's some references to a Yeti house coming back with uh, some Easter eggs that were left in uh, tribute stores and around and a, a superstitions house coming back. So they're uh, Easter eggs. So there's there's a lot out there. And uh, this is what makes this time of year fun for HHN. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, until next time, this is Chase with American Vintage Adventures saying have a great AVA day and I'll see you in the fog real soon. <laughs> bye bye.